that's here. That's home. That's us. Let's go over all the problems. I expect you to be able to use frequency and wavelength um, when you're given the speed of light. So the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And remember, for visible light, 10 to the minus 9th meters is equivalent to a nanometer. So let's try red light, red light with a wavelength of 730 times 10 to the 9th meters. Be sure you use parentheses on that bottom portion when you're dividing that through. So take your speed of light divided by your wavelength to get that frequency. All right, let's use the PIV and the VER. Let's start with parallel circuits. For parallel, um, you got to find your amps on each branch first. So do it separately, do it individually. Then and you can add all three of those amps together, all three branches together to get your total amps. Once you know total amps, you know total power and wattage. Uh, so we got about three watts. Now then, once you know your voltage and your re um, current, your amps, then you find total resistance. So in parallel, do total resistance last. Remember, it goes down as you add branches in parallel. For series, series, you can skip right to the resistance. All right, it really is like one path. You can just add up those resistance to get 60 ohms. Um, if you know total resistance and total voltage, you can find total amps. Then you can use total amps to find your total watts. Now compare that. Look at that. That's in series. A lot less current, a lot less power, more resistance. Compare that to our parallel. We had more amps, more power, with less resistance. All right. Let's do this sound and light. Velocity is distance over time. Oh, I just kind of made this one up. But the circumference of the Earth, it's about 40 million miles, 40 million meters. So four times 10 to the seventh meters. For radiation to travel all the way around the Earth, um, remember the speed of light is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So most texting signals work on microwave frequencies, but that would take about 0.13 seconds. <laughs> All right, let's try it for a sound wave here. So let's say you see this fireworks explode. You're about 350 meters away. Um, that's, choose the speed of sound. The speed of sound, which is 3.4 times 10 to the second, which is 340 meters per second. So yeah, hopefully you see that's just over a second. Hopefully that's easy to see just over a second for sound to travel that far. All right, this goes back to Isaac Newton. How big, how magnified is something going to be? Um, depends on the curvature, depends on the focal length. Uh, so let's check this out. Our focal length would be equal to the one over 96 plus one over 16. Um, lots of ways to solve those. I just found a common denominator uh, remember, you solve for inverse of focal length. So your focal length there would be about 96 over 7, about 13.7. The magnification was easy. That was 6. Okay, crashing. Crashing into the front wall on a scooter. All right. More cushion means more time of impact. That means less force. This also goes back to Isaac Newton. It really is just F equals MA. You're just substituting delta V over delta T for A. Move that delta T over, plug and chug, 1,500 newtons. If I get more time, 0.8 seconds, it's a lot less force. Okay, uh, more of the same here. Let's, check, let's try it for a tsunami. Very low frequency, not turning over very often, very long wavelengths. You can still use frequency and wavelength to find velocity. That's per second. You can use distance and time. Set that equal to velocity. So when I solve for t, it's seconds. That ends up being about a half hour. Nice. Okay, how much does it cost? Let's plug, we'll plug what? Three things in. Each one is 230 ohms. Let's run them for 40 hours. That's not going to cost very much. All right, that is it's relatively high resistance. Um, you get about half an amp on each branch, 
about one and a half amps total. Um, once you got total amps, you can find total power. Um, I get 188 watts. That's less than a kilowatt. Not much. It's a fraction of a kilowatt times my 40 hours times my 10 cents per kilowatt hour. It's about, what's that, 75 cents. Not much. Not much at all. Okay. What do we have here? Decibels. Let's compare two sounds. These should be easy. 60 decibels. That's six bells. 25 decibels. That's two and a half bells. Then you find your difference. Your four and a half. Uh, that would be 10 to the four and a half times louder. You can multiply it out. It's like 31,000 or so. All right. Ooh, capacitance. It's been a little while, but capacitance use farads. Farads are coulombs per volt, named after Michael Faraday, who realized that all types of electromagnetic radiation move at the speed of light. Capacitance, 0.2 farads is my coulombs per volt. So I get four coulombs, four handfuls of charge. Um, it's about 1.3 amps, given that 15 ohm bulb powered through 20 volt battery, 20 volt capacitor. So 1.3 amps would last about three seconds. Four, loop, four coulombs would last about three seconds. Okay, bungee cord. Mass, height, and K. This is kind of our classic conservation of energy problem is what this is. So eight kilograms, it's like a rock. Height, 15 meters, that's like our roof at school. Little, and then a K, about 120, that's fair. That's what a lot of our bungee cords were. So it's the classic set your Two types of energy equal to each other. Joules equals joules. Mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. It's going to equal one half K delta X. Delta X is our stretch. Delta X squared. Don't forget to take the square root after you solve or as you're solving. So yeah, you got your stretch of about four and a half meters, uh, which would mean your bungee cord should be about ten and a half. Thanks for watching. May the force be with you.